I don't know why I called you Rex Landry. <laughs> That's why I said <laughs> you were lucky. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Um, will you take the roll call, please? Chair L uh, Lopez? Here. And then Vice Chair Wol Wolbert? Is that correct? And then uh, Committee Member Guerrero? Here. Committee Member uh, Torres? Here. And then Committee Member Kaplan? Here. Committee Member Bell? It's not here. Committee Member, Member Rothschild? Here. And then Committee Member Richard? Not here. Richard, okay. So Richard. Okay. Now it's the public comments portion of the meeting, not to exceed three minutes. And I have here Leo Padilla. Good evening. My name is Leo Padilla. Uh, I'm a member of the Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters and also an instructor of the Southwest Regional Council's Carpenters Training Fund. <clears throat> I work in this area and I represent a lot of the members who I teach in the area of San Bernardino County and Riverside County. I believe that uh, we will be impacted by the environmental impacts of the project. The city should require the project to be built utilizing a local and skilled trained workforce. Local hire and skilled and trained workforce requirements reduce construction related environmental impacts while benefiting the local economy. In, in a recent 2020 report titled Putting California on a High Road, a Jobs and Climate Action Plan for 2030, the California Workforce Development Board concluded that investments in growing, diversifying, and upskilling California's workforce can positively affect returns on climate uh, mitigation efforts. Moreover, just this year, the South Coast Air Quality Management uh, District found that the use of local state certified apprenticeship programs or a skilled and trained workforce with a local hire component can result in air pollutant reductions. Other cities have not hesitated to apply these skills the, apply skilled and trained workforce requirements for private development projects in their city. Recently, the city of Hayward in Northern California adopted skilled and labor trained workforce requirements into the general plan and municipal code. Local skill and trained workforce requirements can boost economic, economic, uh, I'm sorry, can boost economic development and mitigate transportation and greenhouse gas impacts by minimizing vehicle miles traveled. We spend a lot of time on the freeways. You know, we, we live in the area. We would love to build in the area with the skilled and trained workforce. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to make comments? Okay. City staff and consultant introductions. City staff. Yes, good evening and happy new year. Hi, I'm committee members. Um, so on tonight's agenda, we have a few items of updates from uh, from Woody and his team from PlaceWorks. Tonight, specifically, we will um, have what we're calling a kind of a, a, an action item, if you will, before you is the vision statement for your consideration. Our, our hope this evening is that we have the, uh, the consensus enough so we can move the item forward to the Planning Commission. Uh, if you were so inclined to uh, to receive and file and approve that item to move forward, it would go to the Planning Commission on February 8th, and then it would then move forward to the uh, to the City Council for for uh, uh, acceptance in, uh, as well. So, um, with that, that I uh, just wanted to give you that kind of um, intention of the meeting kind of thing, along with the other on uh, the land use sections. But with that, I'd like to introduce Woody and his team, please. And Woody Tetcher, would you introduce your staff? Thank you, uh, Woody Tetcher. Uh, glad to be back, uh, et cetera. And I'm joined again by Lena Guzman, who's uh, really among many roles on the project. Uh, one of the primary roles, obviously, is the public outreach and engagement program as well. And, and she will discuss and give you some updates on there, some really kind of interesting updates that occurred. So we will share some of that with you a little bit later this evening. Okay. Project updates, introduce uh, 
Woody. Yeah, let me for give your you presentation. <coughs> brief presentation. Let me give you a brief update. Uh, the slide is on the screen uh, where we are in the process. Obviously, there has been a lot of focus on the uh, the vision statement, uh, as uh, Oliver mentioned previously. Uh, just to remind ourselves that the vision statement that you worked on at your last meeting, uh, the December meeting, was posted on the uh, project website. We had 40 responses. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, and the intent tonight is for you, as Oliver indicated, to suggest any revisions based upon what you heard from the public for that vision statement that you drafted previously. Uh, so that we can then take that vision statement to the Planning Commission, as you see the, on the screen, the dates of February 8th to the Planning Commission, and then to the City Council on March 2nd. As we said before, this is really an important benchmark because it's almost like the preamble. When we think about preambles to constitutions or preambles to other uh, elements themselves. It sets the stage for considerably greater detail, uh, et cetera. Uh, and then the other update is uh, we are tonight going to, and you'll see some maps on your table. And this will be for you a homework assignment that I will describe a little bit later. This will be just like school for each of you. Uh, you get to spend some time being back in school to, to do some homework uh, for us in advance of our next meeting because we are now getting into the phase, a uh, very important phase, where we are looking at developing the updated land use plan map for the city. And we gave you an overview of that last time. We'll go back to that for a few minutes. Uh, but the component of that and why it's really important for us to begin to focus on this is also we're going out to the community at large for workshops in each of the wards. Uh, the dates are in the process of being scheduled at this point in time. We'll have that information to you fairly shortly. And we are just confirming locations with the various facilities themselves. We've reached out to, uh, through some uh, CBLs, community-based organizations, and other entities beyond just the typical city facilities to identify venues that are good venues that people relate to as being their place within their community as well. So more information on that coming, but those will be scheduled uh, beginning, we believe, about the second week of March, running through the end of the month as well. And more on that when we get together next month as well. <clears throat> the, that'll be going on in March, and actually in that period of time, from there with August, we're going to be asking you to beginning to, on hearing the input from the public and listening to the input, beginning to, again, update these maps, uh, et cetera, as a part of the process. And again, more upon that a little bit later tonight. The intent is we'll be working through this process through summer so that the objective is that by the end of summer, uh, end of August, early uh, September, at the latest, is to have a draft that we can then, similarly as we're doing the vision statement, take to the Planning Commission and to the City Council. That's a as a sidebar, uh, just if you are, have not been following the, the downtown advisory committee meeting, committee met last night, and they also approved their vision statement for the downtown area. Uh, they had one, again, uniquely crafted uh, for the purposes of the downtown area. Uh, they are uh, they're on an accelerated schedule. So they have been looking at preliminary land uses for and ideas for uses in the downtown planning area, the specific plan area. And they, uh, that information, uh, both of those pieces will also be taken to the Planning Commission on February uh, at, at 8th, as indicated here. So we'll have, uh, for the Planning Commission meeting on February, we'll have two uh, vision statements and some preliminary direction on land use for the downtown area, et cetera. Uh, and then that also will go to the City Council. So the City Council is going to be seeing quite a bit of information and Planning Commission uh, coming up in their next couple of meetings themselves. That's the update on uh, any questions on the, on the sort of overall schedule update. Okay. Okay. Let's go on to the discussion of the draft vision. Okay, so remind ourselves where we have been. Uh, we, at our last meeting in December, you, worked on crafting some language for a draft statement itself. 
that was uh, published, uh, made available information. Uh, so there was a number of mechanisms by which the public was made aware of its availability. It was posted on the project website. It was also advertised through social media and other outlets uh, in terms of its availability for public review. The vision statement was accompanied by a survey, uh, and we'll share with you the results of that survey tonight. You should have a document that you received that actually has all the information that we received uh, that was sent uh, right after the agenda, I think uh, on Friday to each of you as, as well. Uh, as you can see on the screen, we had 40 responses uh, to that survey. And our objective tonight really is we will move into the, the vision statement is to look at the input that you have received uh, from your perspective and do you see anything in the content that you have that would suggest any revisions to the language of the draft vision statement. And we would then like to incorporate any revisions here tonight as then said so that we can then go forward with to the meeting with the planning commission uh, itself. So you have just to remind you, I've just on the screen uh, separated the actual text. Uh, you have the document in front of you, the vision, the, the vision statement, um, uh, and, and in terms of the text. So I'm not going to go through what the content is. Uh, you, you should be familiar with it. It is what is on the screen. This is half of it on this screen, on this slide, and then half of it on the next slide. Uh, various content as well you discussed. So the public comments, again, which are in, in the document that you have here in front of you, <coughs> we, they were divided into two basic questions and that the public was asked. One is, there, was there anything key missing from uh, the vision statement? And the second question was any sort of general comment uh, about the vision statement itself. Uh, in reviewing the comments, and the, the, the image, the text that's on the screen is related to that first question, is there anything missing? And they were just to remind ourselves in terms of the level that we're working at, again, a high level vision. Uh, again, there's some lots of good ideas here. So as we had discussed with other input, we had discussed among ourselves uh, other inputs such as, let me just pull up here, a tourism market being embraced. Those are items that as we get into the economic development strategy later, we will be talking about the various markets at that point in time. <clears throat> so something like that may be a great idea. We will keep that idea if it's not embedded into the vision statement. <clears throat> but uh, that's just one example. <clears throat> the homeless problem is brought up repeatedly. That will be to address through the safety element later, uh, et cetera, or through the housing programs or, again, the various mechanisms for safety. <clears throat> so, again, we do have in the vision some tech that you wrote, some text about safety, community character, and quality that provides, I think, in many cases, an umbrella for many of the items that were here uh, cited within this statement. So <clears throat> there is this information for you. Uh, you have printed copies of it because it's going to be much easier to have that in front of you than what's reading on the screen. And then we have, again, this, these other general uh, comments, et cetera, uh, you know, talking about things about involving religious organizations. Again, we have some overview kind of, you know, about indeed engaging the community in, in your vision statement already. Uh, that becomes very specific, um, et, et cetera. So those are the comments we received. And what we would like you now to basically uh, go back, well, considering in reviewing the material that you received in any input, uh, ask you if you have any edits that you would like to suggest and recommend for the committee's consideration to the language in the, in the vision statement. We will incorporate those and, and get basically buy-off from you as to whether, again, it's the committee consensus that that uh, is the case. Uh, and then we will move, move, move forward. Does the committee have any comments? No comments. Let's go forward. Well, I wasn't here for the last meeting. <laughs> 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 and I'm sorry if I couldn't be here. Um, but I noticed that um, three people mentioned who, who um, inputted on the outpost on the website the problem with the homelessness. And it wasn't real if it wasn't addressing the homelessness. And I don't know why the reason, other than 
um, you, you tell us, uh, Woody, that at a later date, when you're talking about land use and housing and, and so forth, that you'll address that more frequently. Right. Yeah, uh, let, let me just be clear on that because we, we do have in the vision statement, uh, there is a statement here about community safety and well-being in, in the draft vision statement that you wrote. We believe because the homelessness is a current issue that needs to be addressed and what you are looking for, what is the end result of that as well? And I think many what adequate housing, uh, health and safety, those elements are all kind of encapsulated in the end statement of your vision statement. The immediate problem of addressing homelessness and how that contributes to achieving that vision is something we'll dwell in on and drill in further as we move into the sections of the plan where there would be some relevance. Uh, you know, if the question is health of individuals, be it mental or physical health, those are things that will come up into the environmental justice and health discussion as we move into the policy section. <laughs> Similarly, if the issue is just housing and sites. And I will say uh, we are right now Sidebar, which I did not for some reason have up here on the screen, we we're deeply involved in writing the housing element right now, which will be bring, coming to you for consideration. And one of the chapters and a requirement of state law is to focus in on the discussion of the housing aspect for those in need, and, and particularly housing, homeless is what are one of the groups in need. So <clears throat> it's not as if by not having the word in the vision statement, it will be fully developed. And, and, and I think the overall structure of the vision statement gives us the ability to do that as is. Okay. And if I may add to that, please, um, again, keeping in mind that the vision statement, this is, we're looking at a snapshot 30 years from now. So as, as we indicated in the beginning, when we start talking about the vision statement, where um, as we go through the language, we, if we can visualize, you know, 20, 30 years from now, that's what this vision statement is saying. So, okay, we, we wake up in 2050 and and here's what the city is, is like kind of thing. So as Woody was saying, um, so our, our housing element and some of our other um, elements of the general plan will have goals, policies, and measures and such that um, so we can incrementally address the, the various areas. And so not to suggest that homelessness is going to be cured or, or, or solved, um, you know, overnight kind of thing. And but there are, there are things that, that, that the city, that cities can be doing, you know, along the way. And so what we're trying, like what you said, we got, you know, improving the community, public safety and those kinds of things. And so, um, so keep that in mind. So as we start looking at some of these other elements, when they come, come forward and maybe we'll highlight, we'll say, well, okay, if, if, the, if there is a concern about how do we address homelessness in the city, okay, these these are policies that we that we think would help us um, when we when we get into the development code, which is another another process of the exercise. You know what are what what development standards or, or requirements or those kinds of things can we implement to try to to try to address some of these situations? And so again, kind of to uh, to reiterate that this is the vision statement is where we want to be, and so. Um, so that's kind of where I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Okay, then we have no comments. I'd like to move that we accept the vision statement as presented. Do I have a second? No second. Motion carried. All in favor? Aye. 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 All Thank those you. opposed? Remember this night, this is one of your first major benchmarks. <laughs> uh, there will be lots of other <laughs> others coming up uh, as well. We may actually be able to have a relatively concise meeting. What, because what I want to do is now talk, and, and a little bit of this will be a repeat for uh, from the last meeting, and for Amelia wasn't here, this will help in terms of bring her up to date on some of the things we did talk about last, is last time. As I indicated, for the next few months, and really one of the major, if you will, focal points of any general plan is really that map. And that map that indicates where housing will be located, where you'll permit housing in the future, where you'll permit commercial uses in the future, open spaces, et cetera, and then what the standards will be for that. So, you know, how big, you know, if we talk about housing, is it apartments, is it you know, single family, is it, you know, 20 story buildings, you know, what what is the scale uh, when we use development standards associated with that? And then when we talk about development standards, one of the interesting nuances, well, not nuances, 
nuances, direct directives from recent housing legislation is what we used to call design guidelines uh, are no longer, you know, can be used in the same way they used to. They have to be quantifiable, objective design uh, <coughs> standards, standards. So if you can't just talk about having a, let's say, a Spanish facade building, uh, that's Santa Barbara's still trying to figure out what to do with that. Uh, but, you know, you, you need to t uh, articulate numerically and quantifiable way exactly what the design standard will be, uh, et cetera, as a standard. Uh, we're, we don't need to get into that tonight, but I, I would want us to be mindful that as we begin to look at a map, uh, which depicts locations and types of development in the future, which is our next task, is we'll also be thinking and having discussions and we'll have a lot of imagery here for, to share and be getting imagery from the public as well as to what that physical form and character will be. You know, is it more of a pedestrian-oriented center or is it an auto-oriented center? And, the, the, you know, we know some differences about physical layout of space based upon that as well. <clears throat> we'll get there. What I want to do again tonight, though, is to uh, talk about this again was uh, this is a repeat of slide a slide uh, actually a couple slides <clears throat> that we had in our uh, last discussion, but I think it's worthy as we begin the the uh, get on the road to have this discussion to repeat some of the information, et cetera. And one of the first charges is going to be to take a look at the city today. And for working with you and with the community is identify what are the areas that should be basically conserved as is. Now, it may be an open space. You, for example, believe that the hillside area or canyons or et cetera should be preserved as is. Uh, or it may be a particular use that is of, let's say, a density and a character that deserves and merits conservation of that particular use, like a residential neighborhood, say, that you don't see that residential neighborhood turning into a neighborhood of apartments or, or whatever, <clears throat> or it may be a business, et cetera. You know. <clears throat> the airport's there. I doubt if we're going to call the airport site green space in, in the future. So that's an area that we call, I would refer to in the broadest category as being conservation area. Uh, the maps you have in front of you is beginning to get to that initially, but I'll, I'll get into the maps in a moment. So identifying areas of conservation, and then on the screen, identifying those areas in which you may change out of use and I'll just give you some examples. We may have some older commercial areas with vacant commercial buildings, et cetera. And so the question for the committee and for the community would be as well, do we try to keep it for commercial uses or will, is there some reason to change out that use to something else? We see a lot of trends to, for example, in some older commercial corridors to replace uh, commercial zoning with housing or allowing housing within those areas or what we call mixed use development, et cetera. So we want, we want, want to identify uh, those kinds of properties. So we're, we may, may be changing out a use or we may ch be changing out a density. So we may have an area today that may be developed with commercial, but it's maybe just a one-story kind of commercial storefront, uh, a small restaurant or something like that where you want to uh, beef it up, uh, you, you know, technical team, or beef it up to make it more uh, economically prosperous. So you might be allowing some additional density, you know, additional capacity from what is built uh, there today. Uh, so those are the kinds of changes. So we'll be looking first at those areas that conserve and those areas in which some kind of change, either be it a change in use or a change of what we call, we'll use the term densities and intensities, will be uh, desired in the future. And this will be part of your homework assignments, be thinking about that for your ward. Uh, when we come back in our February meeting. And of course, we'll have in our workshops in March, again, that kind of conversation with the, the broader public as well, but with some additional lands. So then uh, when we talk about those, again, categories that may influence you at the bottom portion of the screen, you will see there are obviously certain categories that, you know, vacant properties, you know, are those vacant properties conserved or are those vacant properties areas in which you may want to accommodate development when uh, development may not be permitted on those vacant properties today. Uh, the second bullet down under uh, categories of change would be those that are underutilized. I use the commercial sites, for example, 
close as to where we're, we're losing retail storefronts because of the change of retailing to online retailing. So what are the other uses that may be underutilized? They're no longer, if you will, um, the, and it really relates to the third bullet as well. They may be economically underperforming. Uh, we know the Carousel Mall is one, <laughs> for example, sort of economically underperforming. Uh, and we know that there is going to be under separate planning, et cetera. And then there's the last category here we would be thinking about are those what I call opportunistic sites, for example, uh, that may induce additional development to complement what is already there today. Examples, we have uh, transit stations. So is there the ability to capture, because of the presence of the, uh, the transit station, some use adjacent to the transit station that's gonna both benefit the transit and be economically induced and enhance the community? Or are there other sites like what we know the airport, you know, is a, a engine, if you will, of activity, you know, et cetera. And there are other kinds of areas that uh, we'll, we'll be discussing. Now, again, just for reference, Reference. This committee will be not making decisions on the downtown area per se because of that is, is a separate planning process on, is ongoing. And there is a rather significant scale of potential use in the downtown area that may indeed, that's being considered by the committee, uh, that may indeed be part of the leverage that induces other things to happen within the community. I think that's partly the intent. Uh, they, they will have representatives from that process here to meet with you because we want to make sure it is integrated. It's not just an island because if we look at the downtown, it's really important that the downtown fit and connect with and indeed have a, if you will, a relationship to the surrounding uh, area, uh, the, the greater community, if you will. Not, not just from a transportation connection, but I mean from a land use relationship. For example, you don't have a wall around the downtown planning area and all of a sudden something else right outside the downtown area because you want to make these things transition, fit, and benefit each other uh, as, as, as we move forward. And uh, indeed, as we move, and as I said, that's on a separate time track they've got uh, as I indicated they have that team that group uh, and Milia was I believe was at the meeting last night as uh, some preliminary thought thinking about the uh, uh, types of uses in the districts that would occur downtown uh, and there's some interesting land use categories coming out of that some of those land use categories may be transferable to other areas in the city as we begin to talk about land use categories themselves uh, because it considers residential not just as a type of use like single family, et cetera, but thinking of a place like a neighborhood. Well, what's a neighborhood? Is it a house, but is it also a park? Is it also a school? Is it also where the community facilities are, et cetera? So begin to thinking differently about the kinds of categories uh, that are on the map. And especially since your existing general plan map only has four categories, five categories, uh, it, it needs to, <laughs> to be refined, et cetera. Uh, Indeed, to make compliance. So this is the, the, this is our process. We'll be again working with you through this process. We come back in February, and we're going to want to begin to focus and have a discussion with you about your thinking about particularly your. You know, each of you is representing a ward. So it doesn't mean you sh should it be thinking about other areas of the city as well. But you know, the the purpose of having you represent a ward also is to begin to be very specifically thinking about your ward, spend a lot of time, be diligent about that as you move forward in your thinking. Uh, but again, did not preclude you to say, hey, over next door on this other ward, I think this would be a great use. So very much open to, or a great opportunity as well. So think about this, this committee while you are focusing yourselves on a ward. You, this committee is also looking at the citywide uh, plan uh, as, as a totality. So uh, you may have some ideas. Let's say you're not near the airport about what should be happening next to the airport or, or wherever, uh, et cetera, as we move forward, et cetera. Whoops, I turned it off. Um, so that is the process and some important considerations as we begin to make decisions, uh, as you make decisions, is recognizing what are some of the drivers. Uh, one of the key drivers, as I indicated, will be coming back to you fairly shortly and have a separate meeting on the housing element is that we have this tremendous housing uh, need. 
uh, in terms uh, statewide, uh, and it sounds like, as I read the press nationally these days, uh, et cetera, considerable housing need that we need to provide for uh, that housing element is looking at a eight-year time frame, which is the mandatory time frame. Remember, we're looking out 20 to 25 years. So while we look at accommodating and prompting in that eight-year housing element itself, think about the fact that during the life of this plan that we're working on, we will have three more, two to three more cycles that we'll be going through of meeting a projected housing uh, needs. So we'll need to not only accommodate the kind of capacities and the numbers that have been uh, provided to the city in this round of housing element, we'll also need to be thinking about multiplying that by two to three times, et cetera, um, so as we move forward. So that the, the first item up here in considerations is where should housing go? If we're going to develop, do we move all our, develop, uh, our housing up into hillside areas, uh, up in Vermont, uh, <laughs> to the hillside areas and areas of high fire? I, I hear a reaction, I see a reaction. Or do we locate it somewhere, do we focus back in, in, ter in terms of the internal core uh, of the community? You know, some of that obviously will be absorbed in the downtown areas. I've said the numbers that they're looking at in the downtown are fairly uh, robust. Uh, but are there other areas? Do we begin to think of other places in San Bernardino that we begin to focus the housing uh, itself? Where are the locations? And that we, again, will also be a conversation. Everything I'm saying will be a conversation with the greater community as well. But you become, again, the, the what I'll call is the, you, everything that gets put into the Cuisinart, you are here putting it all together. You're putting the recipe together as, as a committee. Uh, the, in addition to housing, we want to also begin to seriously think about, and I've already brought this issue up, about how do we address the change of the economy uh, from a couple of different perspectives. We're having a significant shift in retailing. It's pre Pre-pandemic, it's been exacerbated by the pandemic. But pre-pandemic, we were beginning to get big commercial centers closing, you know, in in healthy economic communities, and not just the, you know, what happened to the Carousel Mall or its site. But we found in other communities some of the quote big box retailers uh, moved out or changed completely, closed their clothes because of the implications of going to online retailing. So there's a real question in looking at the land use plan. Do we need all the, these areas that we have colored red on our map for commercial uses for a commercial use? Is it supportable? You know, can it be supported? Or how do we begin to shift out some of those commercial uses? We, um, you heard the term experiential retail being a different type of retail. Uh, we need to be thinking about how we can be more flexible than precise because over time, if we're looking at a 30-year plan, how do we provide, in fact, the things we don't know today, 10 years from now, may happen in a new type of uh, business or economy that we have not anticipated uh, in, in the future. You know, if we were writing a plan 30 years ago, we would be talking about technology based businesses, for example, that we're talking about now. So we need to be mindful of providing the kind of mechanisms in this plan that allow for the adjustments and fine tuning over time to reflect for these changes. <clears throat> the third bullet in terms of the considerations as we look at our map is to again look at those new economic activities. And those are the, that last bullet down there, the, you know, what are the new economic activities by transit stations? We have this transit line being constructed between downtown and Redlands, for example. Is that an opportunity to begin to think about what relates to that uh, transit station and, of course, other, other locations? And again, as I said, the whole Carousel Mall in the downtown area is an economic activity, et cetera. And then the last bullet down is really, as we do this, we need to be mindful of how we assure transitions among our uses. Uh, you know, one of the easy solutions uh, in some planning is to, particularly for economic development activity, is to maybe have a you know, new 20-story office building, et cetera, and some of those 20-story buildings, I can point to Westwood, California, but single-family residential neighborhoods. Uh, so is that the right relationship, and, and how do we mainly 
the kind of effective transitions. So we need to think about how pieces fit together to create the kinds of transitions, et cetera. We've heard concerns about the airport. Does it transition and, and the kinds of industries with uh, the surrounding area and neighborhoods, et cetera. And that's, that's a big issue we've heard, uh, you know, from the public and the community, et cetera, uh, on those processes as well. So those are some things to keep at the back of our mind as we move forward into this as well. Uh, the other, and I just noted up here on the screen that we will be, uh, the citywide land use diagram will be integrating what comes out of that downtown planning process as well. There's a caveat on the second bullet here is that we can create colors on the maps that are uh, create development capacity. Those are for a privately owned property. But we've heard throughout the public discussions, you know, we want more some more green space, some places where it may be a park, uh, it may be uh, a small park, it may be a big park, uh, more recreational facilities, et cetera. Uh, we are precluded from, by law to designate specific sites for non-privately developed lands. So uh, we might know that there's a neighborhood that's, let's say, park deficient, uh, et cetera. Uh, in the planning process, we can treat that generally, put a boundary around a neighborhood and say there's a real need for a park within this neighborhood and create policy to move towards a park on that. But we will not be able to identify a specific piece of property, unless it's publicly owned, for a park or any other, or a school or a, any other kind of public, public facility, et cetera, because that, in effect, uh, legally is a taking of private property and, and therefore because uh, any privately owned piece of property under the law of the state of California and through the court decisions that have been made we have to create indeed capacity that there is a return a feasible project on that site etc now in you know Basically, on the court cases, that could be one single-family house on a piece of property. So uh, it, it just you can't take uh, exhaust 100 percent of the capacity uh, of a lot as we get into that. More discussions on that. So uh, our process, as you see up here on the screen, is how we're going to through, go through it. As I said, next month we're going to ask you, and with your homework assignment to take with you, uh, we're going to ask you to begin to be thinking about those areas in your ward. But think, you know, if you have time, get through. You've done a really good job of thinking about your ward, meeting with your maybe your neighbors and your friends, and getting input uh, and again uh, for the, for the ward. Just some preliminary thinking about that because we want to come together. Uh, put maps on the table somehow we'll work on how we're going to do that and at our next meeting in February uh, based upon what your uh, advanced thinking of to begin to mark up in addition to what we have up on these uh, maps here which are only intended to prompt your initial thinking uh, so we'll be coming back to that in February so the first bullet will be <coughs> identifying those general areas that you uh, are thinking are the places uh, that are the conservation change areas uh, we will then be going with that information out to the public workshops that I mentioned in, in March. Uh, all that information will be pulling back to the committee. And then based upon that, we'll also begin to begin thinking about, okay, in these areas of conservation and change, what are the uses you know, that we need to be thinking about in those areas? If I've identified, let's say, an older commercial corridor that I see needs to be changed, what are the possible uses? Is it housing? Is it mixed uses? What is it? Etc. And those will be discussions through the process. We'll go through that process. We'll be engaging the uh, community business organizations as an arm. We'll talk, be talking more about that uh, probably in our next meeting um, in terms of our expanded public outreach program, uh, in terms of having them uh, talk and bring together to the table uh, their uh, network of, of, of folks within the community. And uh, all, again, all of that information will come back to you because all this filters through you. <clears throat> the, the recommendation, as I said, that will come out by the uh, end of summer, hopefully, is something that we'll be working on together based upon what we hear from the other members of the public and the community. You will be making a recommendation then on what will be on that map. And then, I guess I said, we'll take that to the Planning Commission and, and City Council for consideration as well. So let me explain these maps that are uh, in front of you, uh, et cetera. These are not intended to be 
finite, you know, city staff, consultant, delineations, et cetera. They're intended to prompt your interests. They provide, in some cases, information about projects that we know are out there that are pending, et cetera. They are raising issues for some of the areas <laughs> that uh, were identified. These were identified through some, uh, if you will, what I call institutional knowledge of the city over the, uh, through input from city staff over a number of periods of months and in input that we've received, as well as a field observation. Nothing better than getting out and driving around and looking at some of these areas, which I encourage you to do when you think about your award. You have seven maps in front of you, uh, one for each ward. Handily, they're numbered from one to seven, down at the right-hand uh, scale of the map. <clears throat> the underlying colors on this map are an indication of the existing use on ground. On the, for example, on the first map, you see first council ward. You'll see on the right, <clears throat> you will see various categories of use. Uh, from single family detached, detached mobile home, multifamily, et cetera. Uh, you will see office retail and a whole series of other kinds of categories <laughs> that are on the map itself. Uh, this is not the general plan map. We will share with you and we'll make available to you the uh, <clears throat> general plan map, which is very generalized as well. But this is a map showing, again, the basis, the existing what's on the ground <clears throat> today. If you, in looking at your award, say, that's wrong, mark it up and let us know, because we had to create this map for you. Uh, so this was a, a rather an enormous effort. Uh, Harold used to have uh, uh, much greater hair on his head and was looked much younger when he started helping us on this process, because this took a, a little bit of effort to get to this point of, of a lot of sources of information out there, et cetera. So um, we are reasonably confident, but we don't necessarily, would not be surprised if you say there's a parcel and a property here that's mis, uh, uh, mis uh, uh, the designations and property. Let us know because that will be important as we move forward as well. You know, one thing, uh, is it possible to put active track lines? I mean, I, I see where the metro station's at, but I can't really distinguish where the track runs. Uh, we can do that. We can we can do that. We, you will see on uh, the uh, map. We we do have the station locations identified, et cetera, but we can actually uh, have. I'll just write ourselves a note. Yeah, these are all north. All the orientation of this. Oh, the airport. The airport. That that that'll be a sep that's a separate map. Okay. But but it kind of helps to see the flight path over what uses. Sure. Fly over. What I what 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 we what we can do is provide some uh, a couple of separate maps uh, that, that shows that information. Okay. We do have the flight path uh, path uh, maps. And rather than overlay it, we'll, we'll give it to you as a separate map. We'll do it to try to do the same scale so you can correlate the two. Are these, uh, I'm so, sorry, are these maps by chance available online in any format? Uh, yes. We can, um, we have GIS versions and we have PDF versions. And we can uh, give you a link. I think we can work on getting a link to you. We'll, t we'll talk with your staff about how to make yeah, that. That would be great if we could use an ArcGIS uh, link or some sort to, to view these. And uh, that I think that would help a lot to uh, Harold's concern. We could look at railroad tracks and flight paths and those sort of things. A little bit more dynamically, we can turn on and off layers. That would be enormously yeah. helpful. So, this, so if, if, if I may, so um, um, items that are presented before before us and, and all, all those on our um, general plan website, you know, we're, we're, we're downloading a lot of that information or links and stuff. So if you follow. There's a resource tab. Yeah, so if you if you follow the website, it's uh, it's updated regularly. And so anyone, if they if we were to, if they were to jump in today, let's say, and you know what's going on, they can see what what has occurred up to now to catch up, and then um, and then follow up along the way. I think I was looking for more of an interactive tool. Um, where you can zoom in, zoom out, uh, turn on. Oh.
<laughs> Thank you. What, what, I, what I also wanted to mention as well is, uh, as you may, uh, may be aware that recently the, uh, the, the, the City Council has adopt, uh, adopted a, uh, changes to the boundaries of the wards within the city. So we will make those changes. We'll work with, uh, with the PlaceWorks team to make sure that they're, uh, they're updated so that um, it reflects what the current, what the current boundaries are. Um, and then as, as b before Woody continues, um, some of the other exhibits that we'll be providing when we start the workshops is if you look at some of the, uh, some of the areas, like on the first map where it talks about, um, you know, it's, it, you'll see a note what should be here, um, you know, what are the, what's an opportunity in this area. And when you look at it, you know, it's kind of, you know, it may not be uh, easily understandable of what that means. And so maybe we, we are looking at possibility of um, showing aerials, having aerials of, the, of that location. So at the workshops, the, those that attend can, can see, okay, that, well, that doesn't make sense. So that we, uh, again, when you look at the map, if you could see, it's, it's, there's a lot of hopscotching, you know, where you see, you know, it could be one focus area and there's different shades of yellow or, or, or what have you. And, it's so uh, you know we'll 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 focus in on what why, why is why is that occurring, um, what's there, and then that'll help us to decide. Well, okay, should it should it be all just yellow, a light yellow, a darker yellow? Should it you know what 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 should happen there? Um, so so we'll have we'll have several different exhibits so we could um, you know help through the process. For the purpose of tonight, this is just kind of the first brush of of, of the exercise, and and again, um, you know. I'm, you know, good comments like uh, committee member Guerrero would say, well, this would be helpful. That would be, well, that's, th that, that's what I encourage all of you to do. You know, so, so whatever would make it easier for you to, to arrive at, at decisions or, or, or to make, you know, in, in, you know, comments and such, you know, let us, let us know. And I, you know, we encourage that so that we can, we could provide that because, you know, nine times out of ten, if someone asks, someone else says, oh, yeah, that's, I'm glad he asked that question. You know, just, just like back in school, right, we, we wait for someone else to ask the question. So um, I just kind of wanted to make those, those couple of general comments. Thank you. I don't want to speak. <laughs> There's a resource tab on the, uh, remind you, on the, the, the general plan website, and that's where we intend to post and have already posted materials as well that will be useful for you as well. Uh, there is, and I think a, a document that will be very important to you to, to read as you get into this, and I believe this will be posted in the in final form before uh, our uh, February meeting. <laughs> it's a section called exist, uh, Land Use. Uh, and it's a page that documents, uh, I think I have a printed copy of it here, but it documents a lot of important information for your decision making, For it's, and maps. It documents what is on the ground today, existing land use. There is then a map and description of the existing general plan, the designations, calculations of acreage in each land use category, et cetera. There is, again, similarly map and description of the current zoning classifications, uh, et cetera, uh, on, on those maps. And there is also information on approved specific plans that are already out there uh, that have been approved. Uh, everybody know what a specific plan is? I think you probably do. Uh, but approved specific plans are in the section as well. There is also the beginnings of a discussion of what we call community places and character. So it will talk about some of the various districts that compose the school, uh, school, city, uh, what am I thinking of, the school, uh, but, but the city. There is also a section of uh, a discussion and an analysis of the implications of the existing patterns of development on climate change and greenhouse gas emissions, uh, et cetera. I may be missing, there's also a, a, a cumulative section of cumulative issues to be thinking about. Uh, the city staff is now reviewing that particular document. Uh, as soon as we get the feedback, we've asked them to give us feedback within two weeks, I think. And once we get that, we, we'll, we'll, let you know, we'll let you know it's available and it will be available for you to review. It's not a... I don't think I actually brought it with me. No, I didn't. It, it's, yes, I did. It's not a terribly thick document. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you'll be able to get through, but it has sort of everything. It's a grand total of 31 or two pages. So I think it's a very, it's 37 pages. So it, it, it's a very useful, I think, kind of uh, guide for you to take, uh, take a look at uh, as well. It's got a lot of good facts and information, and it, the, all of the information here will be useful for you uh, as you move forward uh, as well. So it'll be made available too. So let me quickly just what you have on these maps today just sort of describe and I'm not going to go through each one of these because there are again seven. But if you look at the notes and I'm just looking at uh, one because this is intended to prompt your thinking about the kind of notes you would be marking yourselves on the maps. So for example, on Ward 1, uh, you will see, for example, an area, if I can use the pointer on this up here, here you will see an arrow and some text that points to an area and sort of a bubble with right there. You see the dash lines. It says things like underutilized character uh, corridor. What should be here? Uh, so that's an area where if you look at that area today, there's some uh, smaller commercial buildings. There's a, a fair number of vacancies uh, within that area in terms of along that particular corridor. And so the fundamental question is, you know, what do we guide? How do we guide the future of that particular area as well? Uh, you will see another area, uh, for example, right down here that says things like more density and proximity to transit station, question mark, transit village. You know, so that, again, is that an opportunistic area, et cetera. You'll see area like here, and again, I said I'm not going to go through all these, but you'll see this area that's circled and annotated that says things like, Isolated residential, sort of surrounded by industrial uh, properties. Is that the appropriate use? You know, is that something that should evolve to being something different? So we have these kind of notes as you move forward. So that this is Ward One, <coughs> Ward Two. Uh, take a look at the notes on the three, uh, four, five. Six basically uh, visually split this pulled it out uh, for this ward because of the just the linear orientation of the ward. Uh, so I uh, the, really the comments that are on this one uh, are also uh, apply, you know the, the, the area that was really the southern portion where the most significant comments were recorded, and then. Uh, through the rest of the, the wards as well. So um, take a look at these uh, maps. Uh, again, homework, uh, we'll be meeting uh, next time, uh, four weeks from now. Uh, we be doing your thinking about them, be marking up, and remember this is not intended to be an absolute final, this is not the final exam. Uh, this is intended to provoke and promote your thinking. Well, we're going to be talking about this multiple meetings, etc. And so beginning, this is intended to stimulate your thinking about the place in the wards and the cities, etc. as we move forward. Uh, we will get these other, and what we'll do is just send out a message to everybody as to what is available in terms of kind of mapping like the airport uh, or the flight pattern and, and the other maps that we can make available and we can note to you where you can find those easily. Uh, Etc. Uh, it may take us a couple of days to get the, anything set up on the site relative to uh, GIS, but uh, at least the maps themselves are already out there. They're already posted there today in, in PDF format today, uh, et cetera. Uh, so um, any comments or questions about this will be the fun part of our meetings for the next few months. Any, any, uh, any questions, comments about this exercise as well? Can we get uh, uh, any more of these maps? We can get uh, we, we we can get you. Uh, just let uh, I will. I was going to say Stephanie was not here, but let Oliver or someone within his staff know of how many copies you'd like. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'd like like sit down over lunch with somebody and I can. Yeah. Feel yeah. No, I mean have. Extra have copies. I have a few extra copies with me. Okay. We can give you a good, but let us know. I mean, you, you may find, and that's, you know, some people like to work digitally on, you know, on, on, on the computer. Other people like that physical copy in front of them, uh, et cetera. So we know that there are multiple purposes. So we can, whatever format you need them in, let us know. Terrific. Thank you. Okay. If not anything more, anything on land use. Uh, well, it, thank you. Yep. Thank you, Woody. You gave us a lot to think about. <laughs> a lot to think about.
this is, you know, this is the element I think we've said in the past is in reality, uh, this is often what gets 80% of the public discussion and public hearings on general plans. So this is a okay. very important stage. Madam Chair. Uh, so I do have a quick question. Uh, I may be jumping the gun. In one of the future sessions, are you going to go over what we're allowed to do and what we're not allowed to do and what some suggested actions? So I'm going to take the example you brought up of an isolated residential. You know, what are what are our options? You know, what can and we, can Yeah, we, we, okay. we will bring for you. Staff is going to give you some preliminary things to be thinking about. Yes. And so when we, when we use for the time, the, you know, term mixed-use development, you know, what is mixed-use? Or, or there's a new category that's often being thought about by many communities called industrial flex, which is not your typical traditional industrial park, if you will. Uh, so there are different kinds of categories. And we'll be working on creating a series of what we call land-use categories categories, which would be the, uh, what I'll call, I hate to use this term, typology, but it'd be the typology we'd be thinking about in a place. But that, yes, will we'll be, and actually we may be discussing that uh, next meeting as well. Okay. Just because we're going to be discussing this with other people, what are the, so these decisions are we reviewing, are that going to be set in stone? In other words, if we're residential, <coughs> And uh, you want to change the type of, of uh, use. Is this going to be, can this be done? That would be a question. I know it's going to be fired up. It, this, this, well, what's, nothing is ever completely set in stone. <laughs> but the, the, the idea is that, yes, these delineations will be official. Ultimately, part of our, part of our assignment when we get through the end of this process is to update the development code, which will be the zoning. And the zoning is the law. It's the regulations that's set in place. So when I say that, though, I mentioned earlier, there may be certain categories and places you want some degree of flexibility. If it's, for example, some discussion about the downtown area is looking at creating some kind of system that allows for, let's say, transfer among uses. So if we don't get X amount of commercial, how many housing units can we get in place of that in the same area as an, as an option? So we, we'll be talking about that as we move forward. And if I may add to that, um, similar to the, uh, the vision statement that was presented to you this evening, and you move it forward to the Planning Commission and then ultimately the City Council and like that, where um, they'll just be, it, it's an acceptance of that, right? And then we'll come back and we'll be working with that. Similar, similar process will be used for the land, for the, each of the sections of the, of the, um, of the general plan. So yeah, the land, so, so maps like this, when we refine them and there's, there's recommendations, ultimately the, uh, these maps will come back to you and we'll say, okay, through our exercises and our community workshops, we, uh, these, these are our maps as, as, as we have to, you know, as, as we're, and we'll bring them to you. You'll make your recommendations and then that'll go to the Planning Commission and City Council uh, again for an acceptance. And, and, and we, need, we need to do that because um, ultimately we'll be preparing an environmental impact report. And in order to do that, we need to be able to analyze what exactly it is that we're looking to approve. And again, through that process, we may find, well, you know, th this should have changed that, you know, we, we, could, we could still massage it. So, um, so to answer your, your, your earlier question, you know, nothing's, um, nothing will be, you know, set in stone or concrete until, you know, you know, a year, a year and a half from now or so when we're taking the item to the city council, okay, here's, here's a general plan environmental impact report. We, we, we want to adopt it, you know, kind of a thing. So, um, um, so that's, that's, that's generally the process. For the if, if you look at the uh, general plan, existing general plan map, one of the areas that will be significantly changed are the residential designations, because it only has two, single family and multifamily. As I think I explained at the last meeting, is what, what that means, if you interpret it today, because of the recent housing legislation, is up, let's say, in Vermont, where you have one-acre lots, a developer could come in and request uh, approval of eight units per acre instead of one-acre lots, could request uh, 5,000 square foot lots because the general plan basically allows up to eight units per acre. And the gen state law was basically changed in the no net less provisions to basically default to the general plan land use categories for housing. 
So the, 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 if you will, the generalized diagram that you see in your existing general plan isn't gonna work anymore in terms of being something that's going to give you the guidance you need that's gonna assure the community regarding their expectations on how land's to be developed. Okay. Let us hear from the project updates, the project activities, the outreach activities. I didn't realize it was coming up so soon. <laughs> um, so we've done a lot um, in, in the, for the month of December. When I was putting this together, I was like, wow, we were really actively busy for December. Um, we held, um, for the downtown specific plan, we had a public workshop. It was actually a virtual workshop with some of the um, local CBOs in the area. Um, we've also held, hosted about three pop-ups in December. Um, and this includes um, passing out information about the general plan and the downtown specific plan in front of elementary schools before and after school to um, get more of the parents um, and the school staff engaged in the, process, in the planning process. And um, we also ha were invited to meet with um, school staff and parents. Um, it's a parents council meeting for the um, Jones Elementary School. Um, to sit down and talk about what some of the issues that they have, that, that they see in their neighborhoods, and to talk about what kind of um, what kind of uh, solutions, resolutions, or improvements for change that they would want to see in the future. Um, a lot of the discussion revolved around more safety, you know, um, more parks um, that were that felt safer, um, so that they can use them with their children. Uh, we already mentioned this um, a while uh, earlier in today's presentation, but we did just to um, give a couple of statistics about how well the online survey did. Um, when we posted the survey on the 16th of December um, that included the vision, the draft vision statement, we had about 40 responses. And um, you saw those public comments in the written summary provided in the agenda packet. And just a really quick overview, um, the, the large majority of the respondents actually did generally agree with the draft vision statement that it reflects the community aspirations. So um, that, was, that was good news. Uh, quick update on the project website. If you haven't been there in a while, we did um, post the, um, the executive summary of phase one um, of, our out, of our outreach efforts, which included all the community workshops, the stakeholder interviews, the pop-ups that we did um, prior to our um, gearing towards our land use planning for phase two. So um, that, that, that summary was actually um, printed out for you and it was part of the agenda packet for the last meeting, I believe, but it's now posted online. So I just wanna highlight that. And um, Stephanie or Sandra are not here with us, but they are busy working on the next session for the Community Guide to Planning Initiative, which will be um, announced very soon. And then finally, probably I think the most important update is um, we have new social media accounts. Uh, Stephanie, who's not here today, worked really hard to get um, our new social media accounts up and running. So on these accounts, we will be posting information on the general plan and the downtown specific plan. And we'll be using um, this, the, our new the um, social media accounts to get um, folks engaged. So what we really are working on is getting followers and friends because without them, we won't be able to um, really make sure that the word is being spread. So um, if you all have your phones now, <laughs> I think we have time. You all can go ahead and follow on, if you have Facebook or Instagram, you can go ahead and follow and tell your friends to follow and share the post and so we can get more attraction and more visitors. Is there anything else that the city wants to say about social media? Oh. Social media you want to say? <laughs> I know Stephanie's not here, but she was going to make this update. No, 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 you don't. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. 
Um, is it going to be announced in, in bilingual in Spanish as well? Yes. Okay, good. On both Facebook and Instagram? Um, I don't see why not. We haven't talked about that, but um, t typically the city's accounts are posted from what I've seen in English, but um, I don't know if that's an Oliver question. An Oliver question? <laughs> yeah. Oliver's, question. <laughs> Oliver's full of answers today, I guess. I mean, um, so we, um, so a, a few things. We've, um, the city has recently uh, hired its uh, public information officer. So, um, so with that, uh, I believe it was about a month or so ago, and um, so we're now starting to do these, uh, you know, these, uh, these, these media, and we're also um, looking at our participation program in general. You know, um, getting the word out and, and getting more more people involved. Um, so. Um, so, so it's a, it's a work in progress, and um, so as it relates to the public participation, we, um, if you recall, we we've uh, a few a few of you are sitting on a subcommittee, so we can make recommendations to the council as as as, as it relates to what how we should modify the scope of work, or the so we can have additional efforts to that. Um, so we're uh, we're working with PlaceWorks right now to put together our ideas and suggestions for that. We will be meeting with the with the subcommittees. Here within the next week or so, fingers crossed. Our goal is to uh, take those recommendations to the city council on February the 16th um, as a way to amend the contract so we can do a you know more robust public participation addressing things like bilingual um, noticing um, how we disseminate information, um, what kinds of uh, additional events we can do, those kinds of things. So we. So, 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 well, there's, there's more to come on that one. So, uh, just um, that's, that's where we are with the, with the kind of social media and participation. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question uh, regarding Jones Elementary. Uh, you stated that staff and parks asked for more parks. Uh, can you be specific? Or did they ask for new parks, or did they ask to improve the existing parks and make them safe? Yeah, so I, I think I was I was there for that one. Um, it was that, that conversation. What I remember hearing was that they wanted to have more access, um, safer access to the parks that were already existing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, that feeds into our vision statement, where you know where we talked about parks and recreation and so forth, where we want to be. And again, when we get to the uh, when we get to the land use sections, when we get to the open space and conference conservation areas. We will address, you know, parks and, and, and those items as part of that, reflective of the comments that we got from the community and from the uh, the various uh, review committees. Thank you. So then uh, we come to the GPAC reports and announcement. This is the portion where GPAC members have any comments or topics that they wish to discuss in the future. Okay, then director's report. Yes, um, I did want to add. A, I, I was going to discuss the public participation component, which I which I just explained. Another thing that we are going to begin doing, um, because as as you, as you started seeing, like tonight, you know, we're, we're, there's a lot of material and packages and documents that we're going to be processing. Um, we recognize that everyone not doesn't have the same level or, of uh, availability of technology to download things, print things, and review things. And so um, I can say this far enough from my staff so they can't kick me, but what we're going to start doing now is what we're, uh, we're going to offer to, uh, to deliver the, uh, the package a week in advance. And so what we will be doing is we will uh, be sending you an email and, and simply saying if you would like to receive a hard copy of the agenda and the supportive materials, we will print it out and we will, um, we will, we will get it to you of your choice. If you want us to bring it to your home, place of business, or if you decide that you would rather come to City Hall and pick it up, um, so 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 keep an eye out for that email that will come out. So um, we we we, we want to be able to do that. So um, one, you have at least you have more time to look at it in advance. You could you know get your notes together um, because it, the, you know like like school as 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 the semester goes on, the assignments get a little bit more challenging, and I, I believe that it's not not fair to kind of put you on the spot the night of the meeting to look at something and to and to react so that's 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 our goal we're, we're going to be doing that with the downtown advisory committee as well um, 
The second thing is, um, you know, every once in a while, like we, we had the question earlier from uh, committee member um, Rothschild in terms of, you know, the website and how do we get get a hold of this. So I, I think what'll be, what will be useful is at the next meeting, uh, we will have, uh, we will have Stephanie and or Lynette kind of give a, give a tutorial or, or, a, or a tour, if you will. We'll bring up the, the website here, up here on the screen and we'll, we'll walk you through it and we'll say, okay, here's where you, here's how you get there. And then here's the different areas. And so we'll walk you through each of the tabs where you can find things. And then, um, so maybe that'll, that, that'll help as well. And, and hopefully the, the audience or those viewing can, can kind of see um, kind of the, how to, how to um, follow the progress on, on this thing. And with that, that, uh, that concludes, um, you know, my, my, my two cents, if you will. Thank you. There being no other business before this general PAC advisory committee, I, I request a motion to, and a second to adjourn until March, until February 15. Yeah, 18, the 8. The 8th is Planning Commission, the 17th is the next GPAC. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, so I have a motion. Second. Aye. All those in favor say aye. aye. And those opposed, well, we know there aren't any opposed. Okay, so that's the end of our meeting. <laughs>